Hey guys, tonight I'm imaging M33. It's a really nice night outside. It's fairly calm, which I do like. Um, transparency is pretty good. There's no moon. Uh, seeing is a little iffy. Uh, my tracking is all over the place. But overall, it's a pretty good night to image something. So I'm gonna image a couple hours, maybe two, three, four hours of this galaxy and then uh, see what happens, see what we can get out of this. So tonight for this imaging session I'm using a 102 millimeter refractor telescope. Specifically this is an SV Boney SV503 102ED 102 millimeter refractor f7 but I'm also using SV Boney's uh, 0.8x uh, reducer and flattener which is installed and that makes it a f5.6 about 570 millimeter focal length. I'm also using a uh, rising cam IMX571 sensor, Sony sensor uh, imaging camera. It's cooled. I'm using it through SharpCap on the computer. And um, this is an excellent, excellent camera. It's very similar to the uh, ZWOA SI2600 uh, MC Pro. It has the same sensor. And uh, physically, it's a little smaller. So um, it's smaller, lighter, but that essentially gives the same image quality. I'm also using an SV Boney guide scope and an SV305 uh, guide camera. So I really like this setup. It's not, uh, it's not breaking my bank and um, it's also very reliable and I can produce consistent results with it. Um, the focusing is really precise. The, uh, the workmanship is really good, especially for the price. And um, overall, I've, this is my favorite scope. I've had uh, uh, Schmidt Cassegrain's and other refractors, but this is this is this is the sweet spot for my imaging style. The mount I'm using is a is an iOptron ZEQ 25 GT. It's an older mount. It's a very simple go-to mount, but at least it's a go-to mount. And uh, after some tweaking and some lubricating and all kinds of little MacGyver stuff, I actually uh, got it to the point where it tracks really, really well. As long as I'm not putting it on grass, which Tonight I'm forced to put it on grass, uh, but basically I really like this mount and it's um, It's pretty much ideal for a telescope like this size Tonight I'm uh, capturing 60 second subs at gain 100 That's like the lowest gain and uh, I usually capture like 60 of them. So that's an hour then I just restart it. The tracking is decent. It's under one arc second. It's 0.84 right now, which is plenty good because I think the uh, resolution of my my rig tonight is like 1.6 arc second. So anything under that would produce good stars. So far, I've captured about an hour and 10 minutes of uh, imaging of this galaxy. Uh, tracking is mostly good, but there are some, some, some slight issues, especially when I walk around the mount doing this video, but it's okay. It's, it's not gonna matter because it's still under 
uh, the limit where my stars would look bad. So I'm hoping to capture another hour or two of this target and then uh, we'll uh, do some editing. Before I start to process the image, it is highly recommended that we capture calibration frames. Right now I'm capturing dark frames. Dark frames help reduce the noise that's coming from the sensor. So what I'm doing is I'm capturing 60 second dark frames, which is the same as my light frames. And I'm doing that with the same setting and the same minus 10 Celsius temperature. So when this is done, which is 20 dark frames, I'm gonna be capturing some bias frames and also some flat frames. So right now I'm capturing the flat frames. That's also part of the uh, calibration frames process. What I'm doing is I'm capturing 70 millisecond frames, 100 of them. It's actually done. Uh, no, it's still running. And um, I have a pretty decent histogram at the lower right corner. And what I'm doing is basically my telescope is capturing just the white screen, which is my computer monitor. And uh, that helps eliminate vignetting and also if there are any dust particles on the sensor, for example. Since I'm using a cooled Astra camera, I can easily build a dark frames library. It means that I do not have to take dark frames at night after the session, but I can just do it in my office. I can just cool it down to uh, minus 10 Celsius, which uh, I've been using outside at night to shoot uh, objects. So I can do the same here and I can just capture dark frames and make it a library and I can just reuse them whenever I'm processing the image. I don't have to spend time at like 3 a.m. capturing dark frames outside. So after capturing all the frames we needed, we have to bring all of them into some sort of stacking software, which in my case is Deep Sky Stacker. It's a very popular software. So I have 257 light frames, 20 dark frames, 100 flat frames, and 100 bias frames. I already did the registering part, and I found that I only had one sub, one light frame that was a little streaky, not perfect, so I got rid of that and I still have 257. So after this, when they are all registered, then we can do the stacking process. And it shows that I have four hours and 17 minutes of integration time. And I usually leave the uh, settings de by the default setting and uh, I can just uh, hit OK and it starts stacking the images. We're gonna open the TIFF file that we saved and here it is and we're gonna do some editing okay so there's gonna be a bunch of level adjustments because this is part of the stretching stretching process basically we are just trying to squeeze out tiny bits of data from a big pile of noise. We can normalize the colors. It's green because the sensors have twice as many green pixels than any other colors, but it's easy to correct it. I'm not gonna show the whole editing process because it usually takes me an hour or two, sometimes even more. I think at this point I'm just gonna jump to the final image instead of showing the remaining steps which usually can take me another hour or so. Thank you for watching my video. I know it's not perfect but this was my first ever attempt to produce a video like this. I do astrophotography as a hobby on a budget and I just thought I would share with you guys how I imaged M33. I know I left out a lot of things, I probably did a few things wrong, but point these out in the comments. Thank you.